is Anita Sherman. I am the editor of the Culpeper Times, and we are doing this program in collaboration with Culpeper Media Network. It's a series where we're going to be interviewing area veterans, and both myself and Culpeper Media Network are very excited about it. Today, I, we have Howard M Money Mills is with us, and we are doing this interview in the studios at 105 North Main, and today is Thursday, September 22nd, and I'm very glad that you're with us today, Howard. You're welcome. All right. I'm glad to be here. All right. Honored very to good. be here. Okay, good. Okay. What I want to do is I want to, I want to start with where you were born, your, the state, a little bit about your family, and how you got into the Navy. Well, I was born and raised in Falls Church, Virginia. Okay. I was born on June 6, 1925. Gosh, you were born on June 6, so uh, the, the D-Day. Yeah, that was D-Day. That's amazing. I'm sorry. Go ahead. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, uh, I was, uh, I turned 25, I mean, uh, I turned 18 years old mm -hmm. in 1943, okay. June 6, and I received a letter from my president, Franklin Delano Roosevelt, mm -hmm. that I would have to apply for a uh, draft. Okay, because that's well, the next thing I was going to yeah, ask you, yeah. whether you were enlisted or I, you drafted. I was drafted. Okay. And uh, on June 6th, 1943, I went to Fairfax, Virginia and mm -hmm. was inducted, oh no, I was told that I should come back on August the 3rd to be inducted into the services. Okay, so how is it that you landed in the Navy as opposed well, to Army? Or when I got back to the recruiting office there, mm -hmm. there was this big guy standing up front. He says, all right, you guys, line up. And as we approached him, he says, you're in the Army, you're in the Navy. You're in the Army, you're in the Navy. Oh my gosh, that's amazing. And I was in the Navy. Mm -hmm. So <clears throat> So you didn't really have a choice. No. Oh, okay. Because they were they were uh, now I remember and I and I know what was going on because mm -hmm. they were uh, uh, storing up people mm -hmm. for D Day. Because that's a year away. Oh okay. Forty three through forty four. Then I uh, was told that I could get on a train and go to Bainbridge, Maryland. Mm-hmm. And that's where I took my whatever training I got. And I learned how to march. I learned how to say yes, sir, no, mm -hmm. sir. I learned how to salute. I learned how to carry a rifle. And they taught me how to, sh how to shoot a gun. Okay. So how long did that training go on? I think it was somewhere in the neighborhood of about 14 weeks because in October, October 9th, I went aboard the ship. Hmm. So it wasn't it wasn't a very long period. No, it then. was not very long because they were like again they were stored up people, mm -hmm. so they could get into the. Now, Howard, the did you have other uh, brothers that were involved in this? Or? Yes, my my one brother was in the CCC camp, and he enlisted in the Navy in 1940, 1938. Okay, okay. And he was already in the Navy, mm -hmm. and he had been home on leave, and he told me that his ship had been shot out from under him twice. Oh he was on a destroyer, mm -hmm. the Shaw 373, and it was in Hawaii. Mm -hmm. And uh, he was on his way back to Hawaii mm -hmm. on December 7. So your parents then had two sons that were involved in... in no, that, there was three of oh, us. Oh, there's three of you, okay. Yeah, my, there was eight of us all together. Mm -hmm. But uh, my other brother, who is one up from me, uh, he went in the army and he was stationed in England. He never okay. got into the, the fight. But uh, my, my brother, William, mm -hmm. and myself, we were the ones that were aboard ships and we went into the fight. Okay, so now you're aboard the ship. So when is it that you, where were you stationed? Well, or where did I that was, ship then I go? I went to uh, Pier 51 in New York. Mm -hmm. I went aboard the USS Texas. I didn't know where I was. It took me a while to find out where I was. And I finally ended up in the 5th Division. 
That's the deck division. Okay. And uh, they took care of the starboard side, the right side of the ship, mm -hmm. in, a, in, a, in a fantail. That's the rear end of the ship. That's where we we had to keep it so clean. So this ship here then? Yeah, that's okay. the ship. Yes, ma'am. And right. uh, we kept it clean on the fantail, and we mm -hmm. swept it down on the fantail, and we washed it down, and we painted it, and whatever we had to do. The first three months, they had no bunk for me. So where I were you? I slept in a hammock. Oh my God. <laughs> How many were aboard the ship? There was about 3,300 kid, uh, 3,300 people aboard 3, the ship. 3,300. Hmm. And they were all 18, 19, 20, 21, 22 years old. Mm -hmm. They were mm -hmm. just as lost as I was mm -hmm. and didn't know too much about where they were doing and why they were there. Right. We didn't read the newspaper then. We'll see, that's we what I'm what, wondering. We didn't know what we, we knew there was a war going on, mm -hmm. but we didn't know why. What right. about communicating with family? Were you able to do that when you were on the ship? Well, we could write letters. Write letters, okay. And uh, they had to be censored. Mm -hmm. Nothing went off of that ship without being censored. Unless you were an officer, the officers didn't have to be censored. Mm -hmm. But uh, I have some of the letters that I wrote to my wife. Mm -hmm. It's right here in the... Yeah, I know bag. you brought some of them with you yeah, today. I did. Mm -hmm. Some of them were mimeographed. <coughs> Excuse me. They uh, were mimeographed and given to all the entire ship, mm -hmm. especially after D-Day. Okay. Because they wanted to let the people back home know that we were all right mm -hmm. and where we were. But the first year that I was aboard the ship, no, it wasn't a year. Mm -hmm. The first four months, five months, we were doing convoy duty. We okay. were taking 50 to 150 ships across the Atlantic Ocean mm -hmm. that were loaded with supplies, airplanes, trucks, mm -hmm. everything, food to England. To England. And some to Russia, mm -hmm. because that was the Lend-Lease deal. Right. And uh, we made two trips. The first trip, we went into Belfast, North Ireland. Mm -hmm. And there, I got to see the Irish. People. I was wondering if you were, you, so you could get off. I oh, mean, yeah, you didn't have to stay on the ship. And, you could get uh, off the ship. Okay. Got off the ship. And then we come back to the States. And by the way, mm -hmm. I was seasick from the time oh, the anchor you. went up till the anchor dropped in England. And then when it was raised in England and come back, I mm -hmm. was seasick. So they the didn't give time. you anything for seasick to be seasick. Yeah, they did. But I would, I thank God I didn't take it. <laughs> My buddy, he took it and went blind. Oh, stop. <laughs> well, right. it was new. They didn't know what to do. Mm -hmm. And uh, because the old, the old sailors, they didn't get seasick. Mm -hmm. It was just us landlubbers. And uh, the second trip, we went, we stopped in Greenock, mm -hmm. Scotland. And there I went on Liberty and I visit, visited the Scotch people in uh -huh. uh, Edinburgh, mm -hmm. went on a train, went to Edinburgh, and we left there, we went up to North Ireland again. Now it's becoming May the 6th, May the 31st. Okay, and what year are we in 1944. here? 1944. 1944. May, May 31st, 44. we were okay. in Ireland. Mm -hmm. Then the ship was secure. That means it was tied down tight. Mm -hmm. You couldn't get off, you couldn't get on. Nothing mm -hmm. went off of the ship. That was on May, no, that was on June 3rd, they did okay. that. And then we come down the coast of Ireland, mm -hmm. and they changed the date of the invasion from the 5th to the 6th because of the weather. Okay. So we had to circle around a little bit until we got back on, on schedule. And from there, we went to the English Channel. Mm -hmm. And from the English Channel, there was about somewhere in the neighborhood of three to 4,000 ships that, that went over to, to England, or to France. Mm -hmm. And they had all kinds of supplies, all kinds mm -hmm. of people, mostly young, young men. Mm -hmm. And we started shelling the beach at June 6th, 
It was about 5.30 in the morning. Mm -hmm. So you were part of that yes, invasion? Indeed. The ship was part yeah, of it. Yeah, we were okay. about 4,000 yards off the beach, at Normandy mm -hmm. Beach, mm -hmm. the worst beach of the, all of it. Yeah. And we, we shelled, I think, the number of shells we put on Normandy. That, that day was about 250, mm -hmm. I think. What was, what was that like, that process? What was it like? The, the chaplain aboard ship kept us informed as to what we were doing. Okay. And we were moving constantly, mm -hmm. moving the ship so that they couldn't get, uh, you could say, they couldn't shoot us. Okay. And, the sh and the chaplain was telling us that was a near miss or that was a hit mm -hmm. or and he was telling us what uh, what we were doing with our shells. And mm -hmm. I have pictures of the bunkers that we were shelling in the okay. little book here. Okay. And uh, we did shell the beach mm -hmm. and uh, I guess it was the second or third day we took on some rangers that had been wounded, mm -hmm. army rangers, and we gave them as much medical attention as we could, then we transferred them to another ship and sent mm -hmm. them to England. Then we got some German prisoners aboard, and they had to be treated. Mm -hmm. First thing you do, you know, with them, you take them down below, strip them down, and give them a bath. Get rid of the bugs, because mm -hmm. we had enough bugs aboard ship, mm -hmm. we didn't need any more. Now, what were your specific duties on the ship? My I mean, when you said that they were, you know, doing these shells on it, what, what specifically I was a doing? shell handler in, in turret sh five. A shell handler, The shell okay. handler, turret five is back there, all back the way on the back. So when you say shell handler, you were actually I was the... I was, had a, a conveyor, a hoist. Okay. I w it was on a track, mm -hmm. and I would pull that into the, into the shell room hook it up to the shell, raise it up, pull it back out, put it on a conveyor, and send it up to the gun. Oh, okay. And then we had powder people. Now mm -hmm. there, you couldn't stay in that powder room maybe five minutes, ten mm -hmm. minutes, and you had to come out because the powder was very, very intoxic, toxic, mm -hmm. and then it would put you right out. It would put you to mm -hmm. sleep. There was a lot of ether in it. Hmm. So it took 400 pounds of powder to go up to shoot that shell off. And we put that on the conveyor mm -hmm. and it went up to the shell and it got mm -hmm. in the gun and, and it fired. Mm -hmm. And there was two guns in our turret and uh, we had no control over the fire. All, okay. all we did, the gunnery, gunnery officer pulled the switch to tell the people that were firing the gun that we were ready. Mm -hmm. and. It had a 36-inch recoil, and you had to stand clear up against the sure. bulkhead like this mm -hmm. to keep it from hitting you, because if it hits you, kill you. Now, when you did that, when you were part of that invasion, how long did that whole process last? I mean, are we talking hours, days, several days? How long? We were in Normandy for 52 days. 52 days. And was that the kind of action that was going on most of those no, no, days? No, uh -uh. mm -hmm. no, we moved the ship constantly, mm -hmm. and uh, we were called on by the Army to do certain things. Now, the G Germans were using a church uh, that was about three or four miles inland, mm -hmm. and uh, they were using that spot because of the tower of the church. Mm -hmm. They called us and asked us if we would take care of that church. And uh, we didn't have but so much elevation to the guns. So our skipper, oh, being, so the, they were, being okay. the man that he was, he was mm -hmm. a good skipper. He flooded the torpedo blister, which went around the ship. Mm -hmm. He flooded it with water and gave, him, gave us another five degrees. Up, three shots and the church was gone. That's the way we took care of things. Right, but you were uh, clearly, I mean, working collaboratively with the Army and that or other things. The Army, the sure. Marines, and mm -hmm. other ships. Mm -hmm. Now we had, when we went into Sherberg, we went in there with, I don't know, six ships, I think. Mm -hmm. Went in, in line, made a U-turn. 
we were trying to get that because we needed Cherbourg for port. Mm -hmm. We had okay. no way of unloading our supplies, and Cherbourg was a good port. Mm -hmm. So we went in, and we took a hit to the port side of the ship. The shell didn't go off. It landed over top of a 14-inch magazine, but it didn't go off. Thank God, because I wouldn't be here talking to you if it okay. had. <laughs> and uh, then the next shell that hit us, it hit the conning tower, blasted and went up through the bridge, mm -hmm. and uh, wiped out the bridge, killed the helmsman, and wounded a lot of other people. Mm -hmm. And then the the, uh, the captain vacated that bridge and went down into the conning tower mm -hmm. and controlled the ship from there. Hmm. What was the um, what was the weather like during that time? I mean, was the ship fairly, or were you having to deal with weather things too? Uh, when we first got there, there was a lot of weather. Mm -hmm. uh, that's what postponed that the postponed invasion. The, was the, the original date, right? And uh, the water was rough, mm -hmm. and the poor guys that were in those landing barges, they suffered terribly. Some of the landing barges were mm -hmm. capsized. Mm -hmm. And uh, it was not a nice thing, but we didn't know that until later. So you weren't part of a group that that went on shore. You no. stayed on the ship. No. Okay. We we had to stay on the ship below decks mm -hmm. because when they fired those fourteen inch guns, you could not be close to them. Mm -hmm. The concussion would just well, Knock it would you kill out. you. Mm -hmm. And uh, they wouldn't fire a gun as long as there's anybody aboard uh, on topside until mm -hmm. they got off. Mm -hmm. the deck. So I was down below. I was all the way at the bottom of the ship uh, handling the shells. Mm -hmm. I was in Normandy and we went to Cherbourg. We cleaned out Cherbourg with mm -hmm. the ships. I got the names of the ships in that mm -hmm. bag okay. that, were at, that went to Cherbourg. Then we come out of there. We went to Portsmouth. We had to go, uh, we had to, to mend our wounds. Mm -hmm. And then we went to uh, Port, Portsmouth. England, mm -hmm. we got repaired there, and they restored the the uh, bridge, and uh, we left there, and we went in. Now we went into a vacation, okay, because we went on the Mediterranean, <laughs> and that is some kind of beautiful. Mm -hmm. We went well, into Oran, North Africa. You certainly deserved a, a break. Okay. <laughs> we went into Oran, North Africa. We pulled in there. The water was it was so clear. Mm -hmm. It was just beautiful. Now, I'll tell you a little story that happened to me and two other guys when we went on Liberty. Okay. Now, a lot of kids there. A lot of kids, no mothers and fathers because the Germans had killed everybody. Mm -hmm. Myself and two other fellows from the ship were walking down the road. Just, we, we didn't have any, there was nothing there really. Nothing but sand. Mm -hmm. These kids came up to us and they had some kind of seeds in their eyes to make them puffy. They come up, they wanted candy, mm -hmm. and we reached in our pocket and gave them what we could. While we were there, the kids were gathering around this Pollock mm -hmm. guy, name a ski, mm -hmm. and took his watch. As mm -hmm. soon as they had his watch, they disappeared. Then coming back to the ship, <laughs> I saw a, we saw a, saw a soldier. He needed help. Mm -hmm. He had needed help bad. He was drunker than a monkey. <laughs> so we stopped a jeep, and we got him up to the jeep, and then we had to pour him in, had to mm -hmm. pick him up, put him in. And that time he lost everything he had eaten that whole day. Oh my gosh. And the guy driving the jeep says, Thank you, you bums. Yeah. <laughs> See what you got done? Well, we, that took care of him anyway. We went back to the ship and we found out we had uh, patrol duty that night. Mm -hmm. So we went out patrolling. And I was on topside, and honestly, I'll tell you, I could, could see down in the water, I don't know how deep, but the fish down there were bigger than me mm -hmm. and just Beautiful, beautiful. Wow. And then we left there. We went to Italy, Toronto. And I had another experience there. Mm -hmm. We went to Toronto, Italy. The Germans had 
just left there. The, the okay. uh, soldiers had secured the place pretty good, but we had we couldn't anchor up to the piers. We had to anchor out in the bay. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> we anchored out in the bay. <clears throat> we had to post Marines around. We had a detachment of Marines aboard ship. Mm -hmm. We had to post them out around the ship to keep the people away because they would come out in, in boats loaded with dynamite and light the fuse and blow us up. This was wartime. Now. Sure. But the other part of it was very, very sad, which I'll never forget. The kids came out in boats. They were picking up our garbage out of the water, putting up on the beach hmm. to eat. Hmm. Bad. Yeah. <sighs> So you have, you have, you know, you have some good memories in there, but some unsettling memories. Oh, that's sad. You know, you mentioned, you mentioned when you had that liberty that you were with a couple of your friends. That was another thing I was going to ask you. Did you form some friendships, oh, or do you still have, or no, 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 no they're no. all dead. They're <laughs> they're all dead. Mm -hmm. And uh, no, I couldn't. Uh, we did. We all had, we could have good friends mm -hmm. aboard ship, but as soon as I was discharged, they went their way. I had to okay. come home and go my way. Sure. And I didn't know anybody mm -hmm. that was coming to Falls Church or sure. Washington D.C. or any place. So you were there for the invasion of Normandy. Then you spent some time in North Africa, Italy. So when was it that you were discharged? Oh, I didn't get discharged until after we left the South Pacific. Ah, so you were in there for quite a while then. Yeah. Now, while we were in, in uh, the Mediterranean, though, mm -hmm. there was another invasion, mm -hmm. southern France. Mm -hmm. But that was a very small one because uh, Hitler had moved his troops up to Normandy. Mm -hmm. And there was very few troops left there. Uh, Saint-Tropez was the landing spot for us. Mm -hmm. And... Uh, then we left. Mm -hmm. We come back home. Okay. Now, when you came back home, what port did you come in? Then when we you come came... into New York. Come into New York again. And okay. Our ship went to uh, Brooklyn Navy Yard. Mm -hmm. They took the guns off of it, put one on a trailer, pull, and I get pictures of it. Mm -hmm. Pulled it up and down Broadway mm -hmm. to raise money, bonds. Hmm. But. Those guns had riflings inside of the barrel. Mm -hmm. And after, after we come back from southern France, those riflings had come out of the barrels, some of them as much as a foot. Wow. Mm. That's the thing that makes the, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. the shell turn so it'll go straight. So they had to put it in, in the, uh, take the guns off and put that back in mm -hmm. to the guns. They have ways of doing that with big presses and so on. So we stayed there. I come home on Liberty. I was home with my family. Mm -hmm. Went back to the ship. We had our orders. Okay. We went through the Panama Canal. Wow. Now, that was another good experience for this little old fall. Sure. Boy. Now, when you got back, when you got back portside, uh, how was that? Did you get a big... Any kind of a reception when you came back no, then? No, no. And because this was still during, I mean, this the war was still. Now some of the some of the women come to the ship that was close. <laughs> My wife was in in uh, so Falls you were, Church. Okay, so you were so you were married then. Yeah, when, I, I got married while I was in the service. Okay, while you were in the service. I was 18, she was 17. Oh my goodness! But we were only married 38 years, so it didn't last. You've died. <laughs> No, she died in 1981. Mm -hmm. But anyway, I got back, and we found out we were going to the South Pacific. Mm -hmm. So we went through the Panama Canal. They gave liberty in Panama City. Okay. I didn't get liberty. And I'm glad I didn't, from what they told me. I went swimming in the freshwater lake. Okay. In Panama, in the canal. Mm-hmm. But they said that was an open city. Terrible. Mm -hmm. But that's beside the point. Okay. We went from there, we come up to LA. It was Navy Day when we landed there. 
Mm -hmm. We had a parade, okay. and I was in the parade. All right. See, that's where I was leading with, uh, with that. All of that followed a roll. We had a, a, a ship dinner, mm -hmm. and then we went to Pearl Harbor. Okay. Now, mm -hmm. we were on our way to the South Pacific. We stopped in Pearl Harbor, and the only thing I can tell you that I really liked about it Dole Pineapple <laughs> had their fields there, mm -hmm. and they had a little cart. We, we tied up to the dock, and they had a little cart that was loaded with pineapple juice, oh, and they wow. were selling it for a nickel a can, a big can of pineapple wow. juice. I got, we, we were able to get off the ship because it was martial law there, mm -hmm. and it was very tight. You could not move freely in Hawaii. And I drank my pineapple juice, and I mean I drank it. <laughs> it was good. Sure. And then I went back on back aboard ship, and we went to a port in the South Pacific that you've never heard of. Okay, where is this? It was an island that was about ten feet above sea level, but had mm. nothing but sand and a few palm trees on. It was called Ulithi. Ulithi. Now, I have not heard of that. That's right. Okay. Because it was a good port for us. It was a good port to unload supplies and pick up supplies. Mm -hmm. Unload ammunition and pick up ammunition. Mm -hmm. And that's where we went to. To Ulithi. So, and we did you stay there or you just... Oh, no, 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 okay. no. We stayed. We left Ulithi and we went from Ulithi to the Lady Gulf. Okay. And there's where... You learned what heat was. And if you didn't know what heat was by the time you left that, you missed the whole boat. Mm -hmm. You missed the boat completely. Uh, I was young. I thought I knew everything then. I was, mm. Then I was 21 years old. Right. Okay. And we spent Christmas in Hawaii that year, 1944. Mm -hmm. And... Uh, the first night we were in, in uh, Lady, the ship was hot. I was going to ask you about the temperature inside the ship. If it was, if there was air conditioning or you're just hot or... Oh man, we had the best air conditioning that that carrier could make. Okay. The natural wind. Mm-hmm. <laughs> That's what I was thinking. <laughs> All right. No, we didn't have any air conditioning. So. <laughs> it was not. But the ship was hot from mm -hmm. the engines and the boilers and everything. And the, the, it was about probably close to 100 degrees down below. Wow. So I just saw, oh man, I'm gonna take, I'm gonna take this. Mm -hmm. I got a hold of my mattress, I went topside. I was up there maybe 20 minutes. Yep. And then what happens? Well, it rained, I mean, <laughs> it rained. It doesn't, it doesn't rain there, it pours. It pours. Mm -hmm. And I went down below and I was glad to get to below. Because my wet mattress was wet, I was wet, mm -hmm. and it was hot. But I didn't go topside anymore mm -hmm. to sleep. All righty. I, I, what what I do, what what you do aboard ship is you find out where the cool spot is, and you make it your home. <laughs> make it your home. When I was in the engine room, that was now I had transferred out of the fifth division. I was in the M division then. Mm -hmm. I was in the engine room. My engine, my station in the engine room, was wherever they put me. Mm -hmm. Circulator pumps, feed pumps, oilers. But this whole time you're on the USS Texas. Oh yeah, yeah. I've never okay. been off of the Texas. Right. Okay, that we're still the on the same ship, on. all right. Yeah. So I was in the engine room and uh, there's plenty of air coming down to the engine room. Mm -hmm. You know, right from upside. So my station was under one of those and I could do my job there. Mm -hmm. And that was cool because <laughs> the engine room was usually about 110 to 120 degrees. Wow. And we had plenty of air there. And we had other benefits too mm -hmm. that I won't go into that. But uh, when you're aboard ship, uh, you, make, you make your own ways, you know, mm -hmm. you make your own deals. And we had control of the ice machines. <laughs> okay. If that'll tell you anything. All righty. 
<clears throat> we knew a lot of pharmacists too mm -hmm. because they wanted the ice. Oh, I see. So there was some, uh, sounds like there was some bargaining going on. All the time. Yeah. <laughs> okay. All the time there was bargaining. And, so you're uh, in the, so where, so where from the South Pacific then? Now we're in the South Pacific, we're in Lady mm -hmm. Gulf. We got orders to go, to leave. Mm -hmm. We didn't know where we were going. We got target practice out of Lady Gulf. The ship was towing a target for us. Mm -hmm. And they were shooting at it. I was at at uh, lunch mm -hmm. one day, and I was on top side. the The ocean was rough. Mm -hmm. The waves were coming over the side, and the three inch guns were doing the firing. And each one of the shells had a box. It was mm -hmm. in a box. Mm -hmm. And I was walking down the starboard side of the ship. A wave came over the side, hit one of those boxes. And, and put it down on my leg, and I had 16 stitches. In it. So that took me out of the fighting, but I knew better than to go to sick bay. I wanted to get to sick bay long enough to have that sewed up. Okay. And they put sulfur drug. That was when mm -hmm. they, they were using sulfur real good. Man, mm -hmm. that worked good with me. Mm -hmm. They sewed it up, put sulfur drug on it. And the, and the doctor says, you've got to spend three days in the, in the sick bay. I said, no, sir, I don't want to do that. What do you mean you don't want to do that? <laughs> he says, you can't do anything on that leg. I said, no, I can't. So he assigned me to a uh, damage control unit, mm -hmm. which was in my compartment. So I didn't know this then, but we were on our way then to Iwo Jima. Oh, okay. Hmm. And we got to Iwo Jima, we started firing, and our shells were hitting that rock and bouncing off. Hmm. So we had to go back to Ulithi, rearm with armor piercing shells, come back to come back. Iwo so we could hit that rock and go in and blow it up. And it was. Nasty. Oh, boy. That was the day I went topside and wish I hadn't. I could see. We were so mm -hmm. close to the beach, we could see the Marines. Oh, that's what I was going to I was gonna lead to is in terms of casualties, if you, how watching, that experience was. My, my experience there was, this is the first time I ever seen this happen. But the Marines had flamethrowers. And they were driving the Japs out in the ocean. Mm -hmm. If they didn't go, they just burn them up. And you mm -hmm. could smell them burning. Oh. Bad. Oh. Anyway, hmm. we were there for I don't know how long. The Japanese then unleashed all of their kamikaze pilots. Mm -hmm. And uh, we were getting kamikazes at night. They didn't hit us. They were hitting the smaller ships. Okay. So we come on back, and uh, we were then ordered to go to Okinawa. And we went to Aishima, mm -hmm. which is next door to Okinawa. And that's where Ernie Powell was killed there mm -hmm. on Aishima. Mm -hmm. And we went there for the invasion of the Marines went on board Okinawa. Our port was in mountains all around us, mm -hmm. and then we were there. Mm -hmm. The kamikazes would come over those mountains at night. Fortunately, they didn't hit us. But I've got pictures of one coming after us. Mm -hmm. We blew him out of the sky. And the picture shows our bullets mm -hmm. hitting the water, hitting him. And he was only about 25 feet off the water, mm -hmm. coming right at us. Mm -hmm. And uh, we blew him up. And then. By that time, then the Missouri was in action. That's another. That's the new battleship. Mm -hmm. That was in action, and they they were bombing. Then they were bombing Jap Japan, and I sort of lost contacts with myself there. I don't even remember when they dropped the uh, the bomb. We were told they had dropped it mm -hmm. because there was a big celebration aboard ship. Okay. We got the band got out, and we were having a lot of fun by 
dancing and mm -hmm. marching around the ship and okay. playing it, playing musical mm -hmm. instruments. And uh, we got orders then to go up in the China Sea for patrol duty. Mm -hmm. The Missouri got orders to go into Japan for the surrender. Oh, okay. And you've just heard mm -hmm. about World War II. Mm -hmm. Because from there on, we took up, we brought back some soldiers into California. Mm -hmm. They took me off the ship in Treasure Island, put me on a troop train, coming back to this to Maryland. Mm -hmm. And that was another experience this old boy didn't have. This this kid didn't have. Yeah, because you're now you've been in. I'm trying to remember now. You went in when you were eighteen. Eighteen, and you're now yeah. about twenty. 21. You're about twenty one now. Yeah. Okay. And I got on this. I got on this troop train, and you get in one way because you can't turn over. Mm -hmm. And they always told me, don't, in the morning when you wake up, don't open your eyes. They were using coal to drive the engines. Mm -hmm. Wow. And all so, that soot. That soot and smoke and everything. And smoke and everything was coming back in the cars. And I opened my eyes and shook my head, and the cinders come out of my eyes. Mm -hmm. And then you get out of your bunk, and then you can't get back in it until you, unless you slide back in on one way. That's how mm -hmm. close they were, and mm -hmm. they, the train was loaded. Yeah. So we got back to Maryland. Now, was there any kind of reception when you got back to Maryland? Or your base? No, 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 nobody cared. Mm -hmm. We were back. You're we were going back. home. Mm -hmm. That's all I cared about. I was going home. Mm -hmm. So I come back, got off the train, got on a bus. Arnold bus, and I was coming up K Street. I said, my wife works down there, let me off this bus. <laughs> she didn't know you were coming? No. Oh my goodness. I didn't have time to tell her. And I didn't, couldn't tell her, telephone, there's no, no mm -hmm, telephone. Mm -hmm. So I got off and met her and we, we spoke to one another. What was that like? You hadn't seen her for what? You don't want to know. All right. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> it was it was pretty warm. I'm sure. I'm sure. And uh, we went on back. She was living with her mother, mm -hmm. so of course I had to live with her. And uh, so, what did you do? I mean, what did you do now? You're you're out. What I do you do out. now that you're back in civilian life? I'm back in civilian life now, and uh, I got back. I was. I had my mustering out pay. Mm -hmm. I think I had about four hundred dollars, which is more money than I ever had in my life. Mm -hmm. And I just laid around for I don't know a week or two, mm -hmm. and I got tired because I I'm busy. I started looking for a job. I didn't have a car, so I had to walk everything. Mm -hmm. We were close to the bus line, mm -hmm. and uh, I could get on the bus and go to D.C. and. And I finally got wind of two jobs, one in a bank and one in the insurance industry. Okay. So I took the insurance industry because it was paying $50 a week. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Because this is now 1946. 46. Okay. So that's how you got into insurance and then stayed with that. I worked for the Insurance Rating Bureau of D.C. Mm-hmm. For 11 years. 11 years, okay. And then I went to work for the insurance companies as a representative. Mm -hmm. and they gave me a car and I drove all around Western Maryland and mm -hmm. everything. I had a good life, a good time. It was mm -hmm. a good life. It was a good job. Mm -hmm. And I didn't have to answer to anybody. I was my own boss. Sure. I'd come and go as I pleased. Well, I had a boss, yeah, but. So. I had to go to the hospital for a minor operation. Mm -hmm. And this friend of mine that I had met, he was in the insurance business, his own independent insurance agent. He comes to the hospital and says, Howard, when you get out, how about coming to work for me? I said, Rolf, I have to think I can make it. Mm -hmm. Try it. I said, man, I got to have money. He says, I'll, I'll, I'll meet your salary. He did. So I went to work with Ralph Boyd, okay. good friend. He was, he was a good friend. 
and uh, paid my expenses. For the first six months, I used to pray for a job. Nothing was happening. I couldn't sell anything. I couldn't sell a drink of water to a dying man, I thought. <laughs> but I believe in prayer. Mm -hmm. I've never told you this. I'm, very, I'm, close, I'm pretty close to God, mm -hmm. and my family is too. So through my prayers, things started happening. And the insurance business was good. Okay. It's good for me. And it is still good for me. <laughs> but it took a lot of work. Mm -hmm. And I only worked seven days a week because that's all there was to it. And I had to work about 23 hours a day. Sometimes I could get off a couple of hours, an hour mm -hmm. or so. But that's the way I made it. Now, in terms of your military experience, did you, once you got out, did you go into reserves or did you sort of... Oh, yeah, I was in the reserve for 10 years. Okay, I wondered if you'd gone into the reserves. Yeah. Okay. But I didn't have any experience in the, in the military mm -hmm. that I could use. Mm -hmm. Before I went in, I, I had to take jobs wherever they would hire me long mm -hmm. enough because I was draft bait. Mm -hmm. Nobody wanted to take me and train me to, for, to do a job. I worked at a filling station. I worked in behind mm -hmm. a soda fountain. That's that's the kind of thing I did. Mm -hmm. And I worked for the insurance companies. And uh, I'll have to admit, they were good to me. I was happy. And I'm here. Here you are. Now, what I'm wondering is, because you're now, you're 91 now. Yeah. I'm wondering about your reflections of your time that you spent in the military or what how that affected you, or if you could talk to young people. I mean, now mm -hmm. now we're in a volunteer situation now, unless they reinstate Well, the let draft. me tell you, when I first got out of the service, I didn't want to have anything to go to do with it. Mm -hmm. I was... And you got several medals here, too. Oh, that's mm -hmm. that comes with the service. Mm -hmm. But uh, when I got out of the service, I didn't want to do anything. Mm -hmm. It was probably 20 years ago when I come to Culpeper that I really got involved. That's what I was going to ask you too, how you now, got to Culpeper. And when I come to Culpeper, I was retired. I had mm -hmm. nothing to do. And uh, we tore the old farmhouse down and we built the house we're in now. Mm -hmm. And uh, I was a farmer. I was having a great time farming. You want me to tell you that story? <laughs> you can tell me about your farming days. <laughs> you did this with insurance too, huh? Well, I you give did up insurance. on the insurance. Okay. When I sold my insurance agency, I had an agency. I worked for five women. Mm -hmm. And I sold the agency. And when he handed me that check, I said bye-bye. Okay. And that's the last I saw of him. Now, I come to Culpeper, Nancy and I, I uh, had that little farmhouse up there. It was a two-story house, mm -hmm. a two a two-bedroom house, and it was a nice little house. But we had a house in Fairfax mm -hmm. that we really didn't want anymore. I built that in 1951. Okay. So we, my, no, my my youngest daughter and her husband moved in that house. They stayed in it for, I don't know, a year or so, mm -hmm. and they lived there. Nancy and I then tore the old farmhouse down, and we built the house that's in there, it's up there now, Brick House. So, uh, by that time, I needed something to do. Mm -hmm. So, I got on some committees here. Sue Hansen. Oh, I know Sue very well. Mm -hmm. She is the culprit. Okay. Why don't you do this? So what are, and that's... Sue has been a great help. To well, you me. got involved with some senior seniors groups, that senior triad program out here, or something. So I sure mm -hmm. did. Mm -hmm. And uh, uh, Hart, Sheriff Hart, helped mm -hmm. me with it. Mm -hmm. uh, Jim Branch helped Jim me Branch, with it when he was sheriff. When he was sheriff, the AARP, when they were still in business, they mm -hmm. helped me with it. Mm -hmm. And we did a lot of good things here in Culpeper. Sue Hansen suggested that I get on the Disability Service Board. 
I got on the Disability Service Board. You still on and, that? I'm sorry? Are you still on that? No, no ma'am. Okay. Uh, that, that's a, it's an advisory board. Okay. I don't want to advise anybody. <laughs> I want to do something. <laughs> and I did. I, I got off of it. Uh, that's when I was working on the uh, automatic door sy system here in Culpeper. Mm -hmm. uh, my wife got caught up in the, in the uh, doors down there in the post office one cold winter day and the wind blowing. And I thought, well, we can't go to the post office, but right here, this is the only one we got. So let's get mm -hmm. some automatic doors on it. You want that story? I remember that you were involved in getting the automatic doors. Yeah. Yep. You, want to, you want to know how? Okay, tell me. Okay. I was getting familiar with my other projects that I had going on with the Board of Supervisors. Mm -hmm. So I come down here to a meeting of the Board of Supervisors and I told them what I was doing. And John Coates was the chairman. I know John. Mm -hmm. And uh, I finished my, well, he, he told me, your three minutes are up, your three minutes, and I kept talking. Mm -hmm. And uh, John's a good friend of mine too, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> I, at the, when I was finished, I asked him if the board would support me. Mm -hmm. Of course we'll support you, Mr. Mills. Thank you for coming. Very mm -hmm. good. That's the last I heard of it. I, well, I knew that. Mm -hmm. Well, John Warner, senator, mm -hmm. come into town, and he was meeting with the Board of Supervisors. So I come down, I thought, now is a good time to hit, hit John. So I introduced myself, and I told him I was an ex-Navy man, and he was Navy, uh, what's the yes. number one Navy man? Secretary of Navy. Right. During World War II. Mm -hmm. And uh, we hit it off pretty good. And then I told him, I says, I am trying to get automatic doors on that post office up here. I said, my wife got caught up in them and it hurt her. She had to be pulled out of them during a windstorm. He turned to his aide mm -hmm. he says, park that down. I thought, that's the end of it. Mm -hmm. About a month later, I got a letter. Senator's office, ho oh, ho, what's this? Inside of that letter was a copy to me that he had written to the Postmaster General. 30 days later, we had automatic doors on mm -hmm. that post office. So see, being in the Navy helped you out. Well, it did, yeah, yeah. Not from yeah. that standpoint. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> what of those areas where you were left the greatest impression? I know you said you were on Normandy, you were in Iwo Jima, you were in the South Pacific. Is there any of those areas that it affected your life more than theirs. I know you had one sad experience with the, the children when you were in Italy. They were out in the water. And well, yeah. we didn't go back to Italy. We didn't go back to North Africa. Nancy yeah. and I have been to France twice. Mm -hmm. We went back so I could show her the uh, shell holes that we made on Point de Ho. And they're still there. They're big mm -hmm. enough to put this building in. Wow. That is the only... Well, we, Nancy and I have been to Germany, we've been to England, Scotland, mm -hmm. Ireland, we've been all around. But nothing affected me like Normandy. Yeah. I went there in 1985 before they cleaned it up. Mm -hmm. And it, the, the barbed wire was still there, the ships were out in the... But now they're gone. Mm -hmm. I liked what I saw. They were doing what should be done. Mm -hmm. And uh, it's a sad thing to see all them boys laying there in that ground, mm -hmm. not bringing them home. Sad, sad. But that's the only thing that's really, I'd say that was the, the most thing that's affected me. Okay. All right, now, Howard, is there anything else you'd like to share with our viewers. I'd like to see the ship preserved. Where is the ship now? The ship is in San Jacinto, right outside of Houston. Okay. And it's in the water, it floats, but it ain't gonna be there long. Uh, two years ago, 99, in 2014, mm -hmm. we celebrated the 100th anniversary of that ship. 
It was in World War II, and it was commissioned March 1914. Wow. And we were aboard the ship. I had my whole family down there because it was a big thing to me. It means a lot to me. Sure. Uh, I have supported it, and uh, I'd like to see it continued. But I was talking to the chairman of the trustees, I guess mm -hmm. he is, but I know him pretty well, and I call him every once in a while to find out what's going on. Mm -hmm. And he said that in, I think it was in uh, early last spring, they had to put some steel posts in around the starboard engine to keep it from falling through the bottom. Hmm. Wow. So that means it's in bad shape. It's in bad but shape. But he told me, he says, the uh, Texas people have awarded 20, they, at that time it was $25 million, and he mm -hmm. was going after another $25 million to get the proper repairs done on the ship. So maybe The volunteers are keeping it going. Mm-hmm. All righty. I don't go down there anymore. Mm -hmm. uh, I used to go once a year for the reunions and so on, but we, we don't have reunions anymore, <clears throat> and I can't fly anyway. They won't let me fly. Even in an airplane, they won't let me fly. Why is that? Ah, oh, okay. Too old. Too old. <laughs> <laughs> but still young at heart. Yeah. But <laughs> All right. uh, I keep in touch with them. Mm -hmm. I call a curator. Talk to her occasionally, and uh, but people have got to get behind it, mm -hmm. and it's the nickels and dimes that keep that thing going. Sure. And uh, if you got any extra money, send it down send there. Send it down there. Okay. All right. I do Very it for good. everybody here. <laughs> <laughs> All right. And, uh, <clears throat> I would say that I have no formal education. And I, I don't know, I, I'm happy that I don't, because I don't think I'd be where I am today if I, if I had a formal education. Mm -hmm. I'd probably have taken a different route altogether. Mm -hmm. But ignorance is a bliss. <laughs> All right. Howard, this has been pleasure. This has been a privilege. It's been a nice, it's I'm glad been, to share this with you. No, really. I'm so privileged that you're sharing it with the viewers. And well, again, Howard, thank you so much. You're welcome. And uh, once again, I'm Anita Sherman, uh, editor of the Culpeper Times. This is the first in our series that we're collaborating with Culpeper Media Network. And uh, look forward to sharing this with the uh, with our viewers. And again, thank you. Mm -hmm.